In this video, I'm going to go over some of the homework questions from lesson 4-2. Okay, I do believe that we did cover number 12 in class. This one can't be congruent, uh, proven congruent because we only have one of the angle pairs marked as congruent. Remember, right now at this point, the only way that we can prove two triangles are congruent is by showing every single piece. Now for number 13, we can prove that these two triangles are congruent. So for number 13, if I zoom in here, the two triangles that we're gonna refer to is this triangle BAG and the other triangle is going to be triangle CDF. Notice every angle and every side are corresponding so even the last angle that doesn't have a mark here we can show that these are congruent by the third angles theorem. So every side has a mark and so does every angle. So we can show number 13 in the congruency statement would be triangle BAG is congruent to triangle CDF. The next question is number 15. They want us to find the values of X so again, I can go ahead here and realize that this congruency mark here indicates that angle Z is also the same and it would also be 70. So then I can add 90 plus 70 and get 160. And then I can subtract that from 180 and find out that my missing angle here, X, is going to be 20. So that would be my value of x. For number 17, it says here, a student says that triangle MNP, so what they're referring to is this whole large triangle, and they're saying is congruent to the smaller triangle of RSP, and the reason why they're saying it's congruent is that they've shown all the angles match. However, in order to show that two triangles are congruent, we also have to show the corresponding sides are also congruent. So this is where the student made a mistake. They've only shown the corresponding angles, not the corresponding sides for number 17. For number 19, for this one, we can see that we have congruency marks here on this angle and this angle. Notice this angle that I've marked as the congruence is equal to 40 degrees. So I'm gonna set this expression equal to 40. I can also figure out what the missing angle is because if you notice, you have a right angle down here. So that means that over here, since this is a linear pair, that side is also 90. So to find the, the missing third angle, I'm going to add 90 plus 40, get 130, subtract that from 180, and my missing angle in both triangles is going to be 50. So this expression up here, I'm going to set it equal to 50. Now to find the values of x and y, notice this is an algebra question. So again, we're reviewing our algebra skills. So I'm going to take each equation now and write them over here to the side. I am now gonna solve the system of equations and the methods that I can use to solve these is either substitution or elimination. I'm actually gonna use elimination and I'm going to eliminate the variable y. So I'm gonna multiply one of my equations, this one, by four. So once I distribute four to each of my terms, I end up with 68x minus four y equals 200. 
now that I've changed the equation, I'm now going to add the two equations together. I get 80x, the y cancels out, and now I'm left with 40 plus 200 is 240. Divide by 80, and x equals 3. Now, the question said to find x and y, so now that I found the value of x, I can go back and plug it in to one of the original expressions, or equations. So let me go ahead and I'll take the blue one here. 12x plus 4y equals 40. 12 times 3. 36 plus 4y equals 40. Subtract 36. 4y equals 4. Divide by 4. So y equals 1. So the answer to this question is x equals 3 and y equals 1. The next question is number 26. It wants you to complete the proof. So they've already given us a partially filled in proof. They've stated all of the given. The next statement here for statement 2, it's talking about angle BCA which is right here. It's saying it's congruent to angle DCE. So over here. Notice that these are vertical angles. So the reason here is the vertical angles theorem. Then the next one, notice the reason is the third angles theorem. And if you look at your picture, Notice that you've already got two angle pairs with congruency marks, so all we have to do is name that last third angle pair, which will be over here. And notice for this one, I could actually name it um, with just one letter. I could actually say just angle B congruent to angle D, but I'm gonna name it with three letters. So I'm gonna call this ABC. is congruent to EDC. And again, that uh, reason is the third angles theorem. And now that I've shown that all three angles and all three sides are listed in my proof as being congruent, my last statement of triangle ABC is congruent to EDC, that reason is definition of congruent triangles. The next one, it says, use the plan to prove the third angles theorem. So we'll go ahead and go through no number 28. Okay, so let me move this up here. So I'm gonna make my two column proof. I'll make my statement column. And my reasons. So again, do not forget to include all of your given. So first statement is angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle B is congruent to angle E, and that reason is given. So notice my hint here telling you to use the triangle sum theorem. So for my next statement, that's what I am going to say. I'm going to show that angle A plus angle B, or the measure of angle A, plus the measure of angle B, plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Now I'm going to state that for the other triangle also. So the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E, plus the measure of angle F, equals 180 degrees. And the reason why I can state that is my triangle sum theorem. And again, if you want to abbreviate triangle with a picture of a triangle, you can. The next thing I'm going to do is either, you can either say transitive or substitution. 
So I'm going to show that angle, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F. And this I'm going to say is substitution. The next thing I'm going to establish is um, I could show substitution here. So I've already shown that A is congruent to D and B is congruent to E. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out A and B and put in D and E. So here I can show for my next statement that the measure of angle D, I'm replacing angle A with it, plus the measure of angle E, plus the measure of angle C, equals the measure of angle D, plus the measure of angle E, plus the measure of angle F. And this would be substitution again. And now what I can show is I could use the subtraction property of equality and I could subtract out angle D and angle E from both sides, leaving me with the measure of angle C equaling the measure of angle F. So this would be subtraction property of equality. And then lastly, because it had it phrased as angle C is congruent to angle F, I can state that reason as definition of congruent figures or congruent angles. And that would be the answer to number 28. The next page has number 29. So this one just wants us to um, come up with a drawing um, that shows that must F be the midpoint of A, D, and E, C include a drawing. So for here, it does not need to be the midpoint. So what I could do here is just draw something like this. And then I can draw in, put in the letters. So A, A, F, C. I'm going to put D and E up here. And the way that I can show that it's not the midpoint is show that these aren't equal. So I could show that that would be the same there. This could have two. This could have three. So this would be a way that you could show that F doesn't have to be the midpoint. If it was, then this side would have been congruent to this. Then number 32, again, another proof question. So again, in order to prove two triangles are congruent, we need to show that every single piece, every side matches and every angle matches. So again, let's set up our statements and our reasons. And let's start listing the given and label the picture at the same time. So first they're telling me that WX is perpendicular to VZ. It's also telling me at point Y and it says Y is the midpoint of WX. And then the other given piece is that VW is congruent to VX and that VZ bisects angle WVX. All of this is given. So let's go ahead and label the picture. So First thing I'm going to show is that the VW 
is congruent to Vx. I also have perpendicular lines here, so that tells me I have right angles here. And it's also telling me that this angle here, Wvx, has been bisected. So if I can go ahead and show the two congruent angles here. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how I drew in those right angles, because that's going to be my next statement. I can say that angle WYV and XYV are right angles. And the reason why I know that is by definition of perpendicular lines. Statement number three is I can show that angle WYV is congruent to XYV, and this one is going to be the right angles congruence theorem. All right angles are congruent. Next, I'm going to bring in the fact that Y is the midpoint. So if Y is the midpoint, then that's going to tell me that this segment is congruent to this segment. So that'll be my next statement. WY is congruent to XY, and that would be definition of midpoint. So notice in this proof, we're reaching back to chapter 1. My next statement, I'm going to bring in the fact that I labeled these as congruent because of my definition of an angle bisector. So I can state here that angle WVY is congruent to XVY. And again, the reason is definition of an angle bisector. And I can prove the last angle pair in there that's not marked, that W, so this guy over here, this angle here is congruent to this. And my reason is going to be the third angles theorem. I'll go ahead and label these with three letters, V, W, Y. is congruent to VXY. And again, the reason is the third angles theorem. And then lastly, I'm going to show this, so this side here in the middle is congruent to itself. So I'm going to say that side VY is congruent to VY. My reason is reflexive. And the last statement, now that I've shown that all three sides are congruent in all three angles, I can state that triangle VWY is congruent to VXY, and that would be definition of congruent triangles. So again, knowing how to show all angles and all sides are congruent is going to be important on the proof um, on your quiz on Wednesday. So that is the last homework problem. So if you have any other questions, you can ask me in class tomorrow.